We're on our way east, by way of Fort Rock, a planned trip accelerated by the fires in Oregon. We were already packed up, so we navigated our way to the only highway still open, headed east and out of Dodge. We eagerly drove the over 200 miles to get here, a deliciously volcanic region about 25 miles southeast of Newberry Volcano, which in turn is not far from Bend, going out of our way via Cabin Lake to see the great Fort Rock. Fort Rock is in the high desert, elevation of about 4,700 feet above sea level on the southern fringe of the Deschutes National Forest. It stands about 200 feet above the surrounding plain, which used to be an ancient inland sea. Fort Rock is a volcanic tuff ring that measures about 4,460 feet in diameter, or roughly about a half mile. It makes a fortress-like appearance, and so it was named by an early settler William Sullivan while he was out looking for his lost cattle. For all you rock hounds, this stop is about finding one big rock and being blown away for geology's sake. How were these rough cliffs and soaring spires formed? Basalt magma was lurking underneath the surface of this pluvial lake that filled this region in the Pleistocene era. The drama happened when the magma rose to encounter the lake bottom. Steam erupted molten basalt in a spectacle of falling hot lava particles and ash. Imagine your volcano science project in school, but yours gets the added mess of being underwater and coming up through thick chocolate pudding mud. It's quiet now, but oh, if these walls could talk. First, they tell you after that launched lava does a Bellagio style fountain show. It rained down around the vent creating the circular feature you see here. As I mentioned before, when the eruption occurred, the valley was filled with water. There are still high water lines on the tough cliffs. It's speculated 21,000 years ago, only the tops of the ring were exposed, and this was an island. It's believed that southerly winds, which are still predominant in this region, drove great waves against the south wall, eroding the soft ash layers, breaking it, and creating this yawning gap I'm standing in. It does make for a good view. You can imagine why someone would want to stay here, maybe paddling out in your ancient canoe to enjoy the security afforded by the island. The region contains about 40 such tough rings in Mars. In fact, a nearby tough ring has a weather-formed cave called Fort Rock Cave, where in 1938, Luther Cressman from the University of Oregon discovered sagebrush sandals and human artifacts dating to approximately 9,000 to 10,000 years of age. At that time, this was private property owned by ranchers Rube and Eleanor Long. Rube was so impressed with the craftsmanship of the sandals. He said they resembled Greek sandals, and they found over 70 of them. They had to be professionals trading in those numbers. Reuben Eleanor Long donated the 370 acres surrounding Fort Rock and Fort Rock to the state of Oregon in 1962 to create a park so we can stand here today. We're walking on hyloclastite. A delightful blend of what Marley Miller in her Roadside Geology of Oregon book terms, hot, wet, clay-rich mud that's full of glass fragments. With time and pressure and heat, it solidified into hard rock and layered a good 40 feet higher than the valley floor. I inadvertently decided to test the glassiness of the ground 
by taking a one-legged slide on our way down the 40 feet. It effortlessly removed all the skin off of a generous patch of my leg. I hold no grudge against the ground. Look at these wild erosion patterns. Their irregularity could be due to their constituents. Recall the explosions that made this whole thing. We have tephra, the term for anything falling out of the air during a volcanic explosion. Lapilli is a size classification for the tuff in Latin. It means little stones. That lapilli tuff is blended in the hyloclastic mashup with a black and red lava rock that came from the existent valley floor. This would create a spicy jambalaya rock that may erode in this spasmodic design. On this arid desert day, it's hard to imagine this surrounded by water. Silver Lake is the last remnant of the inland sea that filled Fort Rock and Christmas Valley Basin back in the Pleistocene. The terraces, traces of the shoreline, carved by the waters, are steps in time. There they are. An awesome reminder of the ancient lake being replaced by the desert. Well, we're headed farther east. Heart Mountain, Rabbit Hills, Sunstones, Steens Mountains, Thunder Eggs. Like and subscribe to see these adventures. Thank you, Lily. And thank you for watching. For more, check out ozonefineart.com.